Hello, my name is Mike Steer. I'm the Research Director for Sardi Aquatic Sciences, which is the research arm of PERSA. And today I'll be presenting the updated survey results for the giant Australian cuttlefish spawning population. The purpose of this presentation is to give you some indication of how we undertake the surveys and interpreting the latest results. So each winter, tens of thousands of giant Australian cuttlefish aggregate along a thin stretch of coastline around Point Lowly, which is north of Wyala in northern Spencer Gulf, South Australia. Uh, they tend to start aggregating in May, peak in June, and then peter off in July, August and September. Uh, now, Saudi undertake a survey every year, and we try and coincide that survey uh, with the peak spawning in June, and we have 10 survey sites that extend around Point Lowly and up until Fitzgerald Bay. At each one of those sites, we send a team of divers down, and those divers undertake um, anywhere between four and eight 50 metre transects. Along each of those 50 metre transects, any cuttlefish that is encountered within one metre either side of the tape is recorded and the divers also try and record the sex of that animal and estimate its relative size. Uh, in times there could be quite a number of cuttlefish within that area um, and the dives can take a considerable amount of time and it's really important that when the divers are undertaking that survey they check in all the crevices and, um, and dens and um, you know, gaps in the rocky reef because quite often uh, you'll have females wedged right underneath the rocks where they're either taking refuge or they're actually laying eggs. What we then get is an estimate of how many cuttlefish there are per unit area, so how many per metre squared. And from that, we can then scale them up to our known area estimate of a, um, available habitat for each one of those sites add them all together, and then we come up with an estimate of abundance, of population abundance for that, for, that, um, for that survey. The estimates of size uh, then give us um, some indication of the relative weight of those individuals, and we can also uh, calculate a, a relative um, um, a biomass as well um, from those estimates of size. So we end up with two sources of information. We ended up with a time series of cuttlefish abundance, and we also have a time series of cuttlefish biomass. So here are the results from when we started in 1998 all the way through the, this year. Uh, 1998 was the, uh, the year when uh, fishing was allowed, um, and 1999 is when the, the, um, the, permanent, or the, the closure was put in place in False Bay. You can see that through time, uh, there was a decrease uh, really to low levels in 2013, which was cause for concern. Um, and there was a whole heap of um, research that was directed towards trying to understand the cause for that decline. And we've seen a, a, a subsequent rebound in that population quite dramatically over a relatively short period of time. And incredibly, we've seen well, uh, quite a, a large increase in the population abundance in 2020, uh, a record level. So, you know, in, in excess of 240,000 individuals were estimated to occur along that stretch of um, Point Lowly Reef uh, in uh, June of this year. We then come up with a, a calculator, a, a biomass estimate. And you notice that even though we've got a record high um, cuttlefish abundance estimate, our biomass estimate isn't reflective of that record high. Um, and there's a number of reasons for that. Um, the, the main one is that the, the population seems to have consisted of um, a, lot, a lot of smaller animals um, than it has in the past. Um, and I'll go through that. I'll go through so if you look at these three figures, uh, the first one at the top here just gives us an indication of the sex ratio of the population. And this just tells us that we see more males to females on that spawning aggregation. And in 2020, um, we had basically a five to one relation, uh, ratio between males and females. And this is pretty typical uh, of that um, spawning population. In fact, you don't, you rarely, you don't ever see it as a, a one to one relationship through time. 
Now, if we look at the average size of, uh, of the animals, of the males and females across all surveys, um, this red line represents the long-term average um, for both males and females, and these, these bars represent the average size of those animals um, each subsequent survey. And you can see that we've had a decline in the, the, the relative size of males um, over the past three or four surveys and similarly with females. But it's important to note here that uh, we've changed the way that we estimate size. Uh, since 2013, um, we no longer um, touch the animals. Or we just estimate their size from a distance, which of course has quite a lot of um, uh, 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 variation in, in those estimates. Previously, we used to collect a, a subsample of, of cuttlefish that we estimate underwater take them to the surface and then um, measure them on board a vessel, but we figure that's no longer um, uh, appropriate given that we're trying to leave that uh, population undisturbed. So I guess the, the, the take home message from, from this is that we should place greater emphasis on the number of cuttlefish on the site rather than the biomass. So in summary, the 2020 population estimates are the highest on record, um, much higher than the 180 plus thousand that we saw in 1999. The biomass estimates uh, reflect to some degree smaller animals, but remember we're approximating individual size um, uh, underwater, which has obviously some, some uh, issues around it. Uh, and look, overall the population has indeed returned to healthy levels since that 2013 uh, decline. As we saw, there's a high level of annual variation. You know, we've seen booms and busts in this population over the past 20 plus years. So it really highlights how important uh, these annual surveys are and, uh, in terms of monitoring this population. Um, so this year, very happy to see uh, the highest uh, number of animals on record. Um, and uh, thanks very much for taking the time to tune into this presentation.